I thought I'd get a little shot of this from my desktop so you can see current gear, first gear, boost zero. Well, you can kind of see what it does is it's going up through the gears. There's the turn signal camera. And it goes the opposite of the talk a little bit about the auto seat. Um, I got mine from BT Diesel Works and I love it. It's uh, I looked at it quite a bit you know off and on but I wasn't I, you know I didn't see any reviews I was waiting for someone to make I saw a few you know there was a few but I was waiting to see more reviews come out online before I actually went off and bought the bullet I didn't really know if it was something I really needed you know and uh, it was cool but I wasn't sure if I really needed it. and one night I was on Facebook and a guy made a comment about a Canadian truck he had a Canadian truck and he wanted to get rid of the where you put it in drive and the, once you pull it out of park the headlights come on and you cannot cut them off and that was an issue for me because I do have a Canadian truck and there are times uh, you know, I do transporting, so I do have to go across the DOT scales. And when I have to go across the DOT scales, there are signs on a lot of them, I think especially in North Carolina, turn headlights off before crossing scales. The reason they do that is they don't want the headlights blinding them. First off, in the cameras, they've got cameras that record you as you come across, and second off, um, so they can read the lettering off of your truck, your VIN number, your DOT number, and all that stuff. So that's the reason they want you to turn them off. Well, I can't do that. In a, Canadian truck. The second is just, you know, if I'm pulling them into my driveway, I don't want my headlight shining in my neighbor's windows while they're trying to sleep and stuff like that. Uh, if you're in a truck stop, there was a lot of times that I've slept in the truck. You know, I just pull into a truck stop on a long trip and if I'm pulling a trailer, I pull around with the other trucks and put some shades up and everything's great. You cut the truck off, you're snoozing you get a little hot you reach up you start the truck up to let it cool off and when you do you don't even know it your headlights are on blinding everybody else there that's trying to take a nap you know so yeah not a, I, was, I wasn't a big fan of that I mean um a lot of people whenever I brought it up there was a uh, one guy who wanted to keep commenting about why I wanted to turn the daytime running lights off it's not the daytime running lights it's when I have a need for you give this kind of money for a vehicle if you don't turn the headlights off, you should be able to. And on the US spec trucks, you can't. So anyway, well, me, me and that guy were talking on Facebook. Another guy chimed in and said, hey, uh, I can tell you how to do that. And he told me about the AutoSync. So I purchased the AutoSync and this thing is neat because I purchased the AutoSync from him and, or from B BT Diesel Works. And uh, I got it. I put it in, I connected to the internet to update the firmware, and I also bought the BCM programming, which came wirelessly. I thought this was neat. Before you had to, Weiss Automotive Media Services, 
you would have to take your BCM out and send it to those guys and they would program it and do whatever you needed done with it and send it back to you. Problem is your truck is down and I, I can't afford for my truck to be down for a day. So I order this, then I order the programming and it was a little aggravating because of my, <laughs> it wasn't this, I don't think it was my internet was just sketchy that day. I Nothing in the house would work. But it finally went through and there is a way to do it where it will go off the truck's Wi-Fi, but um, it didn't seem to want to work for me. You know, it I, I was it was easier for me <laughs> being limited on you know me with the Wi-Fi. It was easier for me just to hook it to the home Wi-Fi and get it done. I did try the other way, but it, it it was like you know when you're doing it one way and you try to change it to another, you have to change it multiple things to get it to work. And I just it was easier to do it that way. Anyway. Eventually, I do want to get it set up where it'll use the truck's Wi-Fi and it'll download up updates while I'm on the road because it will automatically update it, to the best of my understanding. So, you plug it into the, to the port and the first thing, I saw it, but I forgot about it. There, a 2017 newer and it's on a 2018 is what I'm using it on. There's two different wiring modifications you have that you need to do, but the best way to do it, and I looked at it, but I looked at it after I'd already done mine, I already had mine done, was uh, Harness Doctor. If you look up the Harness Doctor, he will show you a lot better than I can how to do these modifications, and he actually sells a harness, so you don't actually have to modify the wiring in your truck. You just unplug, plug his harness in, plug this harness in, and all it is, it, it's very simple stuff. If I can do it, anybody can do it. and first one that you have to do or this will not work on a 2017 plus is I'm gonna show you right now. you do have limited wiring to mess with so it's not like you can just pull it down really good but th this gray wire right here is in this slot and what you do is deep in it pull it out of that slot move it over one slot and put it back in okay and now that box I mean it's just that simple um, I was really nervous about doing mine because this stuff is so touchy, you know, but Let's see. I don't know if you can see but the box goes right on top of the BCM on the The dash side there are there's another box on the other side of the BCM But this box is literally There's a little catch that goes into right up here. I will put it in better after the video is over. Um, yeah, on the gray connector, that gray wire right there, you just, you'll notice if you look at yours, it'll be in the hole next to that hole. You just deepen it, pull it out, <clears throat> move it over one hole, and put it back into that corner hole. And um, when you do that, before you do that, the menu won't come up. But after you do that, go ahead and plug it in. Now, you see it come up on the screen, BC Diesel Work Auto Sync. Push the rear defrost button four times. This screen comes up. My favorite thing on here is powertrain data buying gauges and all you have your power, power trend you have some good data here the boost EGTs uh, engine coolant temperature oil pressure current gear which is nice with this being six speed me towing and all torque converter unlocked and locked um, and it tells a lot of good stuff and also you minimize it and it stays up in front of whatever you're doing and if you don't want that then you hit dismiss and you come over here on your steering wheel controls and go back and you come down to where it says navigation Let's zoom this in just a little bit bring it down to where it says well navigation and there they are right there so and they're they're pretty solid I mean, they don't have a lot. It seems looks like on video there's a little reaction time there, but really it's 
good as any other gauges I've ever used. But, okay, so that, and then this thing does a ton of stuff, but that was one of the reasons that I chose to spend the money on it. And, let's see, here's the other reason I chose to spend the money on it. Rear view camera while you're going down the road. That's awesome. To me, I think that's awesome. Because, like I say, when you're towing and you hear something, you know, you slow down and you're wondering, oh my goodness, was that my safety chains dragging? Or, you know, you just want to look, especially when you're using a weight distribution setup or something of that nature, you know. Um, I, I just think it's neat to look. Now, I don't, that's something else on a diesel. I think every diesel ought to have that. And some of these do, but mine didn't come with it. It's a LTZ, but it didn't come with that. So if you're trying to jump someone off, which I haven't done yet, <laughs> or you're just trying to warm it up in the wintertime, um, there's a lot of good reasons to have a high idle on a diesel. Um, current D DTCs. I've not checked that while it's running, but it'll read. I think we'll try that again when I turn the truck off. Um, full converter lockup controller. I have not messed with it. It's not something that I'm probably going to use. Um, it went back to engine data, but I, I've looked at it, but I haven't really messed with it. Um, DPF force regen. I'm told that can come in really handy, but I've not used it. Transmission learn functions. I know that that can come in really handy, but I've not needed it launch control I used it once and it was pretty cool because what it does you'll see put transmission in drive vehicle stopped hold brake firm press cruise set release brake floor it and I'm not sure exactly what it does I mean I've, I've read up on it some different things of how it works and there's some pl some places that say or some people say that it actually, when you push your brake firm to the floor and then you, you push the set button, it actually line locks the front brakes so you can let off the brake and then basically, you know, giving you a line lock. And uh, I've not seen that hold my front brakes yet. I may be doing it wrong. I've not put a lot of time into it, but I do know that when you do it, when you press the set button, now I'll show you. I know you have to cut the ignition off to get it to go, get all the lights to go off, but try to back out just a little bit. Alright, when I press the set button, you notice the traction control and the Stabila track cuts off. And release brake and floor it. And I'm, there was a little count, countdown that came up there too, and that's cool. Keep in mind when you do that. You have to actually cycle the ignition off and on to cut these lights off. It does cut them right off. Like anyone else, the first time I tried it, I was nervous about it. But, like I say, they should go right back off. Well, they have every time in the past. But, I don't You got to completely power down the system. You have to open the door so the radio and all that stuff goes off. So, there you go, back to normal. So, back to um, work lights. This is a really cool feature, but it doesn't, one thing about when you turn it on, it is not working at this point with the um, ignition on I was told that it would be in a I was told that it should be in an update the strobe lights they're pretty neat but they don't work when the ignition is on in the 17 plus right now um, but I'll, I've read that that's going to be an upcoming update too. So if those are two big things, that might be a turn off. But I don't use them. That's not what I bought it for. So that doesn't bother me. Now, if it was nighttime, I stopped and helped a couple change a tire on the side of the road the other day. And 
if it would have been nighttime, if it would have been a different situation where the full way flashers weren't cutting it, I would li I would definitely turn the ignition off and turn it back to the on position and turn these on. They're going to get a lot more attention. <laughs> They're going to get a lot of attention. You know, it, it very easily can keep you from getting run over on the side of the road. Um, work lights off. This is cool because when you reach down here, anybody can reach down and turn their work lights on. But this, when you turn it on, the reverse lights, actually, if you have bed lights, the reverse lights, any white light that I've seen on the truck comes on when you turn this on. But, once again, it, it doesn't work um, when the ignition is on, or when the, when the truck is running. And But I've, I've been told that's coming in an update. I'm not really worried about that. It does come in extremely handy when you're hooking up a trailer. What I've been known to do is set my parking brake if I know I have a good one. <laughs> Get position, set my parking brake, leave the truck in reverse just to have those backup lights. But with this, I don't need to do that. I can leave the truck in park, hit that button, it turns all the lights on. And when you're hooking up a bumper pull trailer, the reverse lights add a lot of light, especially on a cargo trailer where the light will reflect back on you. A lot better than that actual cargo light and all that stuff. All right, so let's move on. I already went over that. Um, vehicle dynamics info. I'll show you this um, and, and I'm not going to get I don't understand what all of that means I do know that if you hit your brake you know it'll show you the brake PSI that's cool you know that that that's a neat neat thing to know um, oversteer understeer I'm not 100% sure about y'all right I'm not 100% sure about that uh, TCS torque request I'm not 100% sure about that. I do know it changes once you start moving. Um, it will actually go to, um, yeah, it, it'll actually change once you start moving. And I think that's because in the in the computer they have the truck turned back where this truck's supposed to have 910 foot pounds of torque. They don't want you having all 910 foot pounds of torque right out of the box because if you do, you know, and you go out and tie to a 15, 16,000 pound trailer and you have not, you, probably gonna tear the drive shaft out or tear up some stuff so they, they cut back so we'll back out of that and we'll go well I'm past it fuel system test not tried it but it sounds it sounds like it could be helpful performance timer not tried it if you're if that's something you think you need you know um, that could be pretty cool to play with but I have so much stuff in the back of this truck, we don't jerk her around a whole lot. Uh, AutoSync Info. That's where you get your firmware update and all that when the ignition is off. So it tells the BCM is locked, it tells the build, serial number, and all that stuff. All right, so as hot as it is, for you guys, I'm gonna turn the truck off. When you turn it back on, you get that loud chime, then you got, you come over here and you hit the cancel button on your cruise and it brings all this back up, but now the strobe lights actually do work. Got the phone ring. The work lights, strobe lights, they do work. Um, all the, trying to make sure I don't miss anything, secure idle. That was one I wanted. Reverse backup lights. Um, what that's supposed to be, that to the best of my understanding, is if you're in a 2007, I think it's a 17 or earlier. Don't quote me to all this stuff. This is this is just stuff I learned in the research I was doing before I actually made the purchase. When you turn your turn signal on or your work lights, it would flash the reverse lights to signal for the camera to come on. That's what that's supposed to be, but it did not work on mine. Um, reverse work lights on turns the reverse lights on whenever um, you turn the work lights on from here. Not from down there, but from here. Um, DP, yeah. Turn signal camera, I think that's pretty great. When you're towing, I turn it off when I'm not towing. But uh, when you're towing, like I say, if, yeah, it uh, lets you take a look at your safety change right quick and... Make sure nothing's dragging or or anything like that. You're 
emergency breakaway, make sure it's in good shape. You know, it just, I like it. You know, I don't study it when it comes on, but it's good to see. Here's the good stuff. Module setup. You can learn your remote key fob. Tire pressure monitoring system programming. So if you're running a different set of tires and you want, you know, if, you, if you're if you going to try to run a lower, I think this truck set where the alarm goes off at 65 PSI, you can actually set it on down to lower. So the alarm doesn't go off, but you still have the alarm if you do hit a nail or something like that. That's neat. I have looked at it. I've not messed with it because, you know, mine's where it needs to be. HDMI, fin clear, not something that I've messed with. The uh, daytime running lights, I have it on disable, but they're not disabled. I, I'm hoping that's something that comes in an update for the 18 as well. But I had someone ask me in the comments, did it work? And I said, I actually, I don't know. I have to look at it. But um, I know... Even with it being on disabled, when I pull it down and drive, they did still come on. But there's another video, and I don't remember the guy's name that did it, but if you look up for a uh, for the headlight switch mod, so when you turn it to off, it stays off. That kills daytime running lights and all that if you need to get rid of them. You know, I leave mine on auto. That way they still work. That way I'm completely client i guess you'd say but if i do need to turn them off i have the option you give this kind of money for a truck you want options whoever at gm decided they let and here's another thing if you turn it to the off position that turns your automatic lights off just because you come back up to auto it doesn't turn them back on but when you go to parking lot and then back down to auto then it turns it back on okay so whoever thought all this stuff was a good idea from the dealer all this stuff should have been factory on the truck you shouldn't have to buy this product to get this truck to do what it's doing it should with the money you give for it it should do it should do everything that it's capable of doing right out of the box um i don't know about the other trucks i'm a, pretty much a gm man but that is a big just it just really disappoints me with gm i mean Apparently, the person never set it up, never hauled hay on the back of a truck, because when you're hauling hay, you want lights on the back of the truck while the vehicle is in drive moving forward. You know, I understand they don't want somebody riding down the road with their cargo light on, blinding everybody behind them. Make it where it goes off at 20 miles an hour. They have the technology to do it. That way, you can still use it while you're, you're stacking hay. There's multiple reasons you need the cargo light on in the back if you grew up on a farm, you know, but whatever anyway back to this get rid of my rant right quick <laughs> so we'll come back out of this um auto sync info now it has a different menu up firmware update i was told that it should do this automatically when i get it near the wi-fi um the wi-fi that i used to initially do the firmware update when you buy the BCM programming, you hit fetch purchase and it will go in and download your purchase straight to the auto sync. And then after that, you have the option to, um, you come down here to module programming and you have the option to do the BCM programming, which is what I bought. And you have, yeah, you can also do other things. But that's the one that I bought. You hit BCM programming, reading calibration. I mean, you can. I could change it back to stock right here if I wanted to. I don't want to. Um, yeah, I'm probably not even hitting on a lot of the stuff that this thing does. I'm just going over the stuff that I like the most. Secure idle. I only have, when I bought the truck, I only got one key and one key fob. Now, thanks to the dealer. Um, that's ridiculous. But what I do, I leave the key in the ignition and I get out and I hit the lock button. What it's supposed to do, from what I read, is it locks the shifter in place. Where even if you press the brake until you hit the unlock from the key fob, you can't pull it out of gear. I think that's cool. 
you know, why? Once again, GM didn't make it where you could have a uh, turbo cool down timer when I'm pulling a 40 foot horse trailer and all of a sudden you need to go to the restroom. You pull in at a rest area, you want to jump out of the truck and run to the restroom. If you, if you're, if, the, if that rest area is at the top of a hill and you just ran your barometer up to 1100 degrees and held it all the way up the hill and then you pull in the rest area, you don't want to just cut the truck off while it's right that hot. You just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Y'all, anybody else do what they want, but I want to give it a chance to cool down. And that's where I'll put it on high idle and let it sit and run for a few seconds and cool down. Or I'll just get out, leave the can of the ignition, hit the lock button, whatever. But that's what the secure idle does. Um, I think we went through the most of the rest of this. But in my opinion, for the price, am I happy with it? Absolutely. I mean, I would buy it again in a heartbeat. The gentleman that I talked to, the one that reached out to me on Facebook, he was awesome. He even still will correspond with me. I send him a message asking about stuff, even not related to this, um, just related to other electronics on the truck. He has been great. Uh, I think his name is Ben. Um, but yeah, so I'll show you the, there is one other mod that you have to do on the camera to get it to work. You can buy the, the harness from the harness doctor, which is the way to go. It's not what I did because I was impatient. I was in a hurry, so I did it. I just I just went in and changed the wires. I figure if I have to, I changed it in a place where hopefully I can replace the pigtail, but I don't see why I need to ever change it. So, um, when you hit the work lights on, the camera comes on with it. Now, if you hit the work lights on before you make this wiring mod, there is a blue screen that comes up because the camera does not have a signal to power itself on. So every time you put the truck in reverse, it sends a signal from the reverse lights to power it on. And you're not getting that because there's nothing to turn your lights on. This is another thing you've got to remember where that was and touch back because it will stay there. That's one thing that, yeah, I'm not real sure about. I never use this, so it doesn't bother me, but trying to remember exactly where that's at. Yeah, I may have messed up now. Anyway, turn it off. Turn it back on. Well, hey, turn it off. Open the door. Gotta love that with these trucks. Anytime you have to turn anything off, you have to do that. But, um, hit the cancel button. Your <clears throat> so just to show you that work lights on alright they came on I remember where the button was I touch it again and they go off and, you know that's one little thing that I wish was a little bit different I wish that the camera didn't come on with that but you know or something I wish there was a back button or whatnot so turn the strobe lights on i will show you what they do you can see they're more flashing instead of strobing i'd wondered about that because i have strobe lights on the blue truck over there and i've driven wreckers and such it has strobe lights and these are more flashing they're like alternating hazard lights but as you can see i mean they'll definitely get attention if you're in a spot where you need it like I say if I was worried I was gonna get run over on the side of the road that'll definitely catch anybody's attention coming at you and then there are the strobe lights from the rear I said more like a alternating flashing pattern these are your work lights it turns your cargo lights your mirror lights um, and your reverse lights on, which I find it really handy late at night when you're hooking up to a bumper pull trailer because, especially with the bed cover and the tailgate, the cargo lights don't do a lot of good on that. The mirror light, they're not back here, so they're not helping any at all either. But the reverse lights will reflect off the front of the trailer and give you a pretty fair amount of light. I mean, I like that. Um, one thing that you have to do to get the rear view camera to work for the turn signal, 
the turn signal camera and for the where you can turn it on when you're going down the road it gets triggered off of your reverse lights when they're if the reverse lights don't come on the camera doesn't activate if you take this panel off there's screws uh, on this panel right here if you take it off those screws out this panel comes off there's two different um, cables while well, I'm gonna call them going one goes to your lock for your toge handle and the other goes to your camera and you can follow them to see where they're going the one going to the camera goes pretty much right into the camera and if you trim the insulation back off of that there is a black a red a white and a yellow the black is your ground the red is your positive the yellow is your video you definitely don't want to cut the yellow and the white is the trigger wire coming from the backup lights so if you cut the white wire tee it into the red wire that's going to make the camera stay on all the time i don't see why that's going to hurt anything that's what i did with mine right after i found right after i did that i found on the harness doctor has got a adapter that you unplug by the spare tire you unplug the rear view camera or the tailgate handle camera and plug the adapter in then you plug your plug back in on the other side of it that is the way to go i just i'd already done it before i found that out so maybe that'll help you out some too i didn't i looked on google and everywhere i couldn't really find a good way to do that but that's what i did in this tailgate it does work being inside the tailgate i'm hoping it keeps it out of the weather and uh road salt and stuff like that this winter but the best way to go i would feel like is from the harness doctor getting the harness and plugging in that way you don't have any cut wires you're not cutting up the wiring harness on your truck and all that stuff so there's that so i start it back up one of the main things i got it i did all this for in the first place is get it where i could turn the lights off now i'm gonna turn them on and There's the daytime running lights for the people who want to get aggravated about somebody wanting to turn their daytime running lights off. There they are. And even on a Canadian truck, automatic light control off. It's still in drive. No lights. Now, it did, one thing I do like, now I can turn the lights on. We'll go back to auto and turn them on bright and turn the fog lights on. Well, for whatever reason, it didn't give me bright lights. the lights aren't actually on it was a daytime running lights okay so now I also thought that was neat you don't run down a highway like that please don't but if you're in a pasture if you're out working on whatever and you need the extra light now you can light them all up I thought that was great and that is in the I think that that's that was with the BCM programming that got me that and I know also normally when you do the tap to blink turn this off you can hear me um, normally when you do the tap to blink if you know what I'm talking about turn those back on daytime right now. tap to blink would normally get you three blinks now I have one two three four five tow haul tap to blink one two three four five six you know i was thinking it was going to go up to nine i thought i read that somewhere but i'm i'm good with that because three blinks are not enough to change lanes in my opinion i've been driving for 20 years pretty consistent and that's just not enough um a lot of times I would take and hold it down and then let off a hit that next time once I was starting 
halfway through my lane change that way you know or something like that that or i'm, I'm i've been doing it in that blue truck so long that you know, there's not any of this fancy stuff you got to turn it off and on by yourself so um anyway i hope you guys got something informed about this video i know i'm missing some things i almost forgot to tell you show you about the the all the lights coming on on the front where your fog lights come on with your bright lights and i'm not sure if the dim lights and the brights went together before or not i was thinking it was dim bright and dim with fog is all you can get anyway but i hope that this was helpful um i've been using the two of the the programming and the auto sync for about a month now and i love it i would what i spend on it i would do it again in a heartbeat anyway i'm gonna turn the air back on i'm actually gonna go in the house it's, it is hot out here but like i said i wanted to make that video because i have not seen that many of them on there and um if you have any questions i'll try to answer them best i can thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time